Hi, this is Professor Pomenko, and I'm going to go over a quick PowerPoint with you to talk about dimensional analysis to use for dosage and drip calculations. First of all, in dimensional analysis, we need to start off with what we're solving for. That's going to help you set up your problem the way to get anything to work and how to solve for any kind of problem. So let's try a simple problem to get started. The physician orders 1,000 milliliters of D5W to infuse over 8 hours. How fast will you run the drip in milliliters per hour to complete? So in this problem, what are we solving for? Well, we're solving for milliliters per hour. So we need to set up our problem. So whatever you're solving for, you want to write down and then put your equal sign because that's going to help you direct where you're going to start. So in this problem, we're solving for milliliters per hour. So where in our problem did we see milliliters? Well, we've got a thousand milliliters right here over eight hours. So we're going to start off with whatever's on the top here that we're solving for. We want to start with on the top right here. So we're going to start with our thousand milliliters. In this problem then, we're looking for time underneath. So in our problem, we had eight hours, thousand milliliters over eight hours. So this one's pretty simple to set up. Our first equation here, a thousand milliliters divided by eight hours, gives us our milliliters per hour. So when we do the math, a thousand divided by eight, we get 125. So in this problem, we would run the drip at 125 milliliters to complete it in eight hours as prescribed. So now let's look at it for drug dosage calculation. A nurse practitioner orders digoxin 0.125 milligrams PO daily. The drug is supplied as 250 micrograms per tablet. How many tablets would you administer? First thing we need to see is that we have milligrams and micrograms in this problem. So we need to convert to like units. I'm going to choose to convert to micrograms for both so we don't have a decimal point, but you could just as easily change both of them to milligrams and work the problem that way. So we need to figure out how many micrograms is in 0.125 milligrams. So we can use dimensional analysis for that as well. So what are we going to solve for? We're going to solve for micrograms. So we want to start with micrograms on top. And we know from our conversion that 1,000 micrograms is 1 milligram. So then do we need milligrams in our problem? No, we need micrograms. So we need to get rid of milligrams. So this is where we bring in our my milligrams. So we put 0 0.125 milligrams over here and we cross out, cancel out, our units we don't need, just like in algebra from high school. So then we do our math, 1,000 times 0 0.125 equals 125 micrograms. So 0 0.125 milligrams equals 125 micrograms. And now we can go on to solve our problem. So if we're looking for tablets in our problem, so we're going to come over here and write tablets equals. So when tabs is what we're solving for, we want to start with tab right here. So in our problem, we knew that there were tablets that were equal to 250 micrograms per each tablet. Now we want tablets, not micrograms, so we need to get rid of micrograms. So our order is 125 micrograms. So again, see how we cancel out our like units, leaving us with tablets? And we do the math here, 125 divided by 250 equals 0 0.5 tablet. So in this problem, to deliver 125 micrograms, with 250 microgram tablets, we would give one half tablet. Let's try another one. Prednisone, 15 milligrams is ordered daily for a patient with asthma. Prednisone is available in five milligram tablets. How many tablets will we administer per dose? So again, what are we solving for? We're solving for tablets. So we're going to come down here and write tabs, and then we want to start with tabs on the top. So in this problem, we have five milligram tablets. So one tablet equals five milligrams. We want to get rid of the milligrams. So that's where our 15 milligrams in the problem comes in. Multiply that by 15 milligrams. We can cancel out the milligrams, leaving us with our tablets. So 15 divided by five is three tablets. So in this problem, we would give three tablets to administer our 15 milligram dose. We can also use dimensional analysis for drop factor configurations. So we use drop factors when no IV pump is available and we're just using the tube, tubing to count drops. It's calculated in drops per minute and we have two different kinds of tubing. We have macro drip tubing and micro drip tubing. 
Macro drip tubing varies. It can be anywhere 10 drops per milliliter, 12 drops, 15 drops per milliliter. So in the problem, when you're using macro drip tubing, we will give you how many drops per milliliter is there. But in micro drip tubing, it is always 60 drops per milliliter. So in some of your problems, it may not indicate that 60 drops per milliliter is micro drip tubing. It might just state there's micro drip tubing in use. And you have to remember that that will always be 60 drops per milliliter. So we can use dimensional analysis in these kind of problems as well. In this problem, the physician orders an IV cefazolin, 500 milligrams and 50 milliliters of D5W to be administered over 30 minutes. The tubing drip factor is 15 drops per milliliter. What rate will we run the drug in drops per minute? So what are we solving for? We're going to be solving for drops per minute. So we want to start with our drops per minute. So the problem gave us our drop factor of 15 drops per milliliter. But we don't want milliliters in our problem, we want minutes. So milliliters in our problem comes next. We want to get rid of that. So in our problem, it talked about 50 milliliters and then over our time, over 30 minutes. Remember our problem said 50 milliliters over 30 minutes. Now we don't need this 500 milligrams in the problem. That's just a distractor. What we really need is this volume, 50 milliliters over this time. 30 minutes with this tubing, 15 drops per milliliter. So then we can cross out milliliters. It leaves us with drops per minute. We do the math. 15 times 50 is 750 divided by 30 equals 25. So the answer in this problem would be 25 drops per minute. So let's try another one. We need to administer 500 milliliters of D5 normal saline over four hours. There's no pump available and our tubing drop factor is 10 drops per milliliter. How many drops per minute will we run the fluid? So again, solving for drops per minute. So if we have drops on the top here, we want to stop, start with drops here. So our tubing was 10 drops per milliliter. We needed to give 500 milliliters over four hours. But we want minutes in our problem here. So we need to convert this four hours to minutes. So we can put in another conversion here. One hour is 60 minutes. And now we're going to do our math. So we're going to multiply across like this. So 10 times 500 times 1 is 5,000. And 4 times 60 is 240. So in this problem, 5,000 divided by 240, we get a number of 20.833333. Now, for solving for drops per minute, we can't count a partial drop. Not even Superman can do that, I think. So in these drop questions for drops per minute, we need to round to the nearest whole number. So just like we do in our dosage calculation, if our number is 0 0.49 or down or less, we're going to round down. And 0 0.5 or up, we're going to round up. So in this problem, when we get 20.8, we're going to go ahead and round that up to 21. All right, let's try one more problem. 100 milliliters of D5.5 normal saline over two hours with micro drip tubing. So again, we're solving for drops per minute, and we're using micro drip tubing, which is 60 drops per milliliter. Notice that it wasn't didn't tell you that in the problem. You have to remember it. So again, solving for drops per minute. So we want to start with our drops on top. So we'll start with our drip factor, 60 drops per milliliter. We need to deliver, deliver 100 milliliters in two hours. Again, we want minutes, so we need to convert our hours to minutes right here. 60 times 100 times 1 is 6,000. 2 times 60 is 120. We do the math, and we come up with an answer of 50 drops per minute. Your Ogden dosage calculation book has some more problems like this in there if you need some more practice. There will be some practice problems up on Blackboard in your course to help you practice these kind of problems. There will be dosage calculation on every exam that you have, so make sure you get these right. And I'm going to strongly suggest to you that you start understanding and utilizing dimensional analysis for your dosage calculation. It is the one way you'll go into MedSurge 1 and MedSurge 2 and really be able to understand dosage calculations a lot better as we start doing advanced math. I hope that helped, and if you have any questions, please give us a holler. Thanks a lot.